Our third honoree, Ruth Greenfield, was also nominated by Marzi Kaplan. Marzi, thank you so much for being out there and letting us know who these important people are. Ruth is a concert pianist, composer, teacher of music, and of humanities. She's been an impresario of arts and culture in South Florida since the 1940s. She launched a lunchtime and 6 p.m. series of cultural programs in downtown Miami and integrated a conservatory of music which opened music programs to children of color before federal law mandated integration. As shown in this last election, we can see how many barriers have been overcome. Ruth's work set the stage and the curtains are still opening. Please join me in welcoming Ruth Greenfield. Good evening, everyone. I'm going to thank Marcia Zerovitz. I've known for so many years. Uh, she has had so many of the exhibits from Key West, where I come from. Uh, Joanne Arnimans, who is the co-chair, Lori Gold, Tamara Sheffman, and committee people who are such rooters like Marcy Kaplan. And of course, an audience of women expert in the art of breaking glass ceilings. And men, like my close friend Aaron Schechter, whose encouragement and constancy outweigh machoism. <laughs> Girls growing up in Miami in the 30s were expected to have titles, unless it was Miss or Mrs. Early on, however, women like my mother, a school principal, and two impresarias inspired me to move beyond the expected. The first for me then and now is Manazuka. Any of you remember Mana? She was a baby doll blonde, much under five feet with six inch heels. Awesome. And over 50 when I studied with her in the 30s. Mana hosted Tuesday afternoon concerts during the winter, bringing down her friends, the Itzhak Perlmans and Pavarotti's of the day, to perform in her Greenstone Mansion at 17th Street and the Bay. Over 150 elite members of the community paid $10 for the season. We called her home the Carnegie Hall of the South. She was a renowned concert pianist, had written over a thousand published works, and she was also a shrewd businesswoman. Lesson, Lana stays my model for stepping out of the role of housewife or Mrs. Piano teacher by taking her deserved place on the stage of equality. The other impresario, Marie Volpe, managed the University of Miami, half student, half professional orchestra, conducted by her mild-mannered husband. Marie, big-boned and imperious, greeted me one day with, You've studied with so many famous musicians. Why can't you play better? <laughs> she had a point, but could have worded it better. To her credit, Marie, a non-musician, also brought down superstars, including Rachmaninoff, Eterby, Copeland, and Met stars. Lesson. These two divas disliked each other. Egos ran high. Yet in their single purposefulness, they achieved high marks, building cultural pillars that stay tall today. After majoring in music at the University of Michigan, I gratefully accepted a job in a shed at the University of Miami, teaching mainly post-war soldiers on the Gian Bill. Two years later, I left to study in France and there married my wondrous Miami beau, Arnold, a lawyer who loved to paint and cook and liked to hear me play the piano. Practice, he'd say. I'll call you when lunch is ready. 
Returning to Miami and four children later, I looked for a job. <clears throat> Decided to sleuth around for a position at the new community college's North Campus. Taken on with the position of instructor, I noticed all the men hired were immediately associate professors. At the first meeting of the semester, when the chairman offered a class in music theory to one of the men and he declined, I raised my hand. Can you teach it, he queried. <laughs> when it came time for a sabbatical, I was verbally confirmed. The following spring, my family and I were ready for six months in England. When told that a male colleague had been awarded the leave, I finally acted. Met with Dr. Masico, president of the college. He listened and nodded. A week later, we took a plane eastward. Lesson, march in, speak up. <laughs> if you asked an octogenarian what were her rewarding experiences, I'd reply, a music conservatory at noontime and 6 p.m. shows. West of the railroad tracks, a mere three blocks from our home, lay Colored Town, as it was called. During the 30s, this area paralleled the white community with a bastion of professionals, social levels, and some of the world's most stellar visiting musicians. Northwest Second Avenue was known as the Great Black Way. Josephine Baker at the Harlem Square Club. Count Macy at the Cotton Club. On our side, Lena Horn at the Clover. And Matt King Cole at the Beaches Copacabana. Captivating the all-white audience with yes, yes for entertaining and no, no for staying over. After hours, they were guests across the tracks. Accomplished jazz musician, where are you, Charlie? And native son, Charles Austin, took action and created an integrated <laughs> instrumental program at his segregated school, where he was teaching by busing in highly gifted white and Cuban students to join his in classes, band, and orchestra, Charles Austin. tracks separated us. It wasn't until I went Midwest to college and lived in Paris where friends were every color. I didn't realize I had grown up in a town with a large black population and knew none of them as colleagues or friends. Returning to Miami, I heard about a 13-year-old boy who studied Summers at Juilliard. Yet when he returned home, found the advanced music doors closed. James Ford. In 1951, became the first student of the Fine Arts Conservatory, which was open to all. I'd like you to meet this prodigious pianist who still practices daily and composes. And another student, my son Charles, who was also at the conservatory. <laughs> he loves to play Liszt and is the classical music reviewer on WLRN and often in the Herald. Before the conservatory physically closed 25 years later, it had six branches throughout the city and was a conduit for talent that might have been impeded during those challenging years. And they were. Hate mail, taken to court, blackballed from all the music organizations. Lesson, worth it. The conservatory had brought black and white children together to play black and white keys. In 1972, 
after transferring to the college's Wilson campus, I noticed that the bustling downtown of my childhood was now mired in blood banks, pawn shops, and the homeless who complained that the new building was ruining their neighborhood. <laughs> Instead, this campus has become a prime contributor to the downtown resurgence. Remembering noontime concerts at a church near London's Trafalgar Square that drew grateful crowds, I got the campus president's green light to launch free weekly lunchtime shows, first held on the street, steps of the courthouse, in the park, and eventually the new campus and Gusman Theater. Vibrantly assisted by old time friend, Ruthie Levine, here she is. <laughs> and she's a drama and actress pro. Uh, and with faculty encouragement, we soon gained, gained an audience of students, workers, shoppers, and visitors. To keep these folks from heading home and sitting in the traffic, the college approved a 6 p.m. series. For a small admission at sumptuous Gusman Theater, a growing audience savored local, national, and international artists. Appreciatively to all of you who came, you kept the Light Up Downtown series lit. Lesson, act upon your vision with others to improve the quality of life in your neighborhood and your community. Envisioning projects is truly gratifying when young movers, when younger movers and shakers continue to improve on them. The New World School of the Arts, Dash, the book fair, magnet schools, museums like this one, with its historical emphasis on Florida jewelry. I'm elated to be a member and to be here with you tonight. Thank you. I have many heroes. You just heard from one. When I, uh, just as an aside before the next introduction, and I think you have a sense of the the sense of humor about this lovely woman. Uh, when I called and said we needed a photograph of her, she said, I don't have one, but I can send you one of my mother. She made me practice. <laughs> <laughs> the practice paid off. 